What is up YouTube, back in the garage. It's uh, just me today. Today's video is gonna be a little bit different than usual. Um, this video is actually supposed to be uploaded three weeks sooner than it was. The last few weeks have actually been kind of unplanned um, and I had to kind of change the order of operations here. But that is under good circumstances because as you guys know, I bought the cool Celica back behind me that is gonna be a fun project here on the channel. Because I bought that car, I now own five vehicles and I have to sell one. So over the last few weeks, I was getting the truck ready to sell. Um, today's that's actually getting inspected and hopefully will be up for sale and hopefully I can clear out some space and regain some sanity and normalcy and I'll only own four cars, which I guess is only slightly better than owning five cars. But like I said, this video was actually supposed to make out earlier. The week that I uploaded the supercharging mounting video, I actually went ahead and designed an equal length header. And for this video, I actually want to go ahead and walk you through the design process for that. I just wanna show you guys how I did it. I'm no designer by any means, but I had a lot of fun doing it. I wanna walk you guys through how I did it and keep you in the loop through this whole process of designing this uh, supercharger kit for the MR2. So first off, if you haven't seen the mounting video, um, go ahead and watch that. That'll kind of get you up to speed on where I'm at with this uh, 2ZZ swap MR2 supercharger build which is going to be awesome this thing is almost fully mounted up um, these spacers i need to make a few more for the bottom mount um, but basically it's mounted up ready to go i already have some changes i want to make to the mount so this may be coming back off and i may replace it with some new parts that i get cut out but they'll be very minor so i'll just kind of update you guys on that as it happens but for the most part this is the design um, this is how it's going to be mounted. This is the location it's going to be mounted. So now I need to move on to the next stage. As you guys can see, to get this supercharger to fit down in here, um, I currently have my header off, which is laying down here. And as you can see, this kind of comes straight out of the head and shoots down, get mounted in here like this. This supercharger would never clear it. So um, if you guys have been following uh, since, you know, the first couple videos of this car that I uploaded, I've been saying how I want to make a full stainless exhaust, and that would include the header because I knew I was going to have to make space for the supercharger mounting it in this location. So I decided I wanted to engineer this header in a way that will make it easiest to manufacture, uh, easiest for me to make. So what I ended up doing is using a free app on my iPhone. Um, it's actually a 3D scanner app. You can get these on any phone. I'm pretty sure most of the phones nowadays can handle the software that they use. Most of the cameras can, can do what they need to do with the LiDAR and whatnot. So Lake and I did a full scan of the engine bay and uploaded that straight into, at the time, his SolidWorks that he was using on his computer just to make sure that it worked and we had the correct file. And I did this with the supercharger installed. So what we could do then is look at this 3D model in our computer and actually scale it up to the size, the correct size of the engine bay. Next, I went over to my computer, loaded in the 3D scan. So I'm gonna pull that up. I have everything else hidden right now. So basically what I did is I pulled this up and I scaled off of, I believe these two bolts here. I had a, I got the actual measurement, scaled it that way. And then I double checked off of a measurement on the supercharger. So something down here, I just double checked to make sure that it matched up with what I thought it was going to be. And once I got that scaled up correctly, I knew I could start drawing things in here and knew I knew that they would then fit in my actual engine bay, which was pretty cool. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it for a 3D model, it doesn't have to be. Uh, it just is for me to lay out uh, some parts and make sure they fit in my engine bay. What I had to do next was lay out some planes. Here was the first plane I made, basically the plane that my exhaust flange is going to mount on. So I didn't actually draw the exhaust flange into the 3D model, but I laid out the plane that it would mount to the head um, because ultimately the flange is going to have holes in it and the piping is going to go through the whole the whole way to kind of where the flange meets up. So I'm going to go ahead and hide all this stuff again. So I'm going to hide my uh, 3D model. So now here is that plane that I started with. Um, and then what I did was started making some sketches on this plane. And what that started with was these four holes. So um, go ahead and hide this plane now. So. These are my four holes, basically. Um, they're not exactly the hole on the head because those are kind of like an oval hole, but these are the holes 
that if I had a pipe centered right up with that hole, uh, that's where it would start. I laid out those holes and then what I started doing is once I got a good idea of the routing I wanted for the manifold, which I got from playing around in the program, um, I couldn't really visualize it until I got it in here. I wanted to figure out what size piping I wanted and also the size of the bends that I wanted. I wanted to try to make this as simple as possible as far as ordering materials. I don't have a good way to bend my header piping, so um, I basically ordered pre-bent piping and what I ended up with was I'm, I ordered 90 degrees and I ordered 135 degree bends. So. I had to sketch out, you can see here, this sketch up here are the measurements for the 135 degree bends. So I had the, the radius in there and sketched that out that way. And then down here is the 90 degree bend. So that's what I started with. Um, and I'm going for like a kind of like a high rise type of look that you see on like the A86 styles um, and some like SR20 uh, builds. Um, it's not going to be exactly like that because those are more of like a round loop at the top, but uh, this will be that 135 degree bend. has a pretty big radius, so it does get that round look, but um, that, that bend will get me up out of the way of the supercharger, which is the main goal. So I'll just go ahead and throw these all in here. I laid out all four of those sketches, and this is the, the type of shape I started getting. And one thing I was doing at this point was... Uh, making sure all the lengths were the same. So I was basically, you can see, just kind of tweaking the angle of all of them to fit together so that the pipes could clear each other, but also making sure they're all the same length because I want this to be an equal length header. So I think at this point I have them all within like three eighths of an inch of each other, which I'd say is very close. I'm going to play around with that a little bit more to try to get them probably within like a quarter inch of each other on the total length. I'm no expert on that, but from what I've read, an equal length header is what you want. So basically what I did then is use this pipe command. What you do is select the path you want it to go on. So uh, for this first one, you select the path. I'm using one and five eighths tubing, which is the OD, and that automatically extrudes it out over that path using uh, just that diameter. So even though I have these circles out here, I usually, I basically just use those for the center of my path. Um, I didn't extrude that shape out over it. Uh, you could also do it that way if you wanted to, probably using uh, sweep command, I think would be what it is. I went ahead and did that for each of these. And I'll go ahead and just throw these all in here. And this is where I could really start seeing if my pipes were all clearing each other. So what, what you'll find whenever you start doing this pipe command is that if the pipes interfere, you get some red interference spots uh, shown up in the model. And then it actually, it actually doesn't let you complete that pipe command. So that was really helpful. Um, and I basically was just like I said, working with angles coming out of the header, the angles coming off of the flange, and then the rotation of this bend to the 90 degree bend. So these pieces aren't all identical as far as how they relate to the flange, but also how the two bends relate to each other. But this way, I get all four of these pipe ends to a point where maybe a few small pie cuts and I can get them to uh, merge into a collector together. And I guess one thing I kind of forgot to show this whole time, um, I was doing this all with my uh, 3D model in place. So my 3D scan was on my screen as I'm laying this stuff out. And as you can see, here's the head here and I have clearance all around. It looks like this one's a little tight. So I might have to go back and play with that one a little bit to bring it out away from the, the head. Um, but for the most part, they're all gonna go underneath this bracing here. So now that I know these all fit in here correctly and they all, and they're all gonna look sweet in there. So there's where I'm at right now. This was a super fun project for me. I don't get to use CAD a ton at work. I'm not really doing design in my engineering position that I'm in. So it was fun to relearn some of this stuff that I learned in school and just uh, get to play around a little bit. And also, I think I'm really going to enjoy doing things this way in the garage uh, so that I know things are going to come out right the first time instead of, you know, measuring once and cutting twice. So hopefully this gave some inspiration to somebody looking to do something similar. Um, free program. 
you can really find how to do all this stuff on YouTube. Um, it's all, you know, available to everybody. So a few hours on a weekend, you can learn a lot of stuff and um, do some pretty cool stuff in here. So this is where I got to with my 3D model, but what I could do, I could go ahead and order material for the header. And that is actually already here and it's been here for uh, about three weeks now. So uh, let's go take a look at it. So the first thing I had to do was figure out where I'm going to get my exhaust manifold flange. And I did that. I'm not going to go into too much detail with how I did it, but uh, basically I took the flange that was on my uh, 2ZZ swap header and got all of the measurements I needed and laid that all out in CAD on a 2D model. And then I used this website, Send Cut Send, to basically have them cut it out. So they do pretty cheap cutting and they supply all the material and everything. So you just send them a DXF super easy and uh, you get your part. So here's what it came out as, uh, super nice. Got these in uh, 3 8 stainless steel. So they're all ready to go. And I only bought two because it was uh, almost just as cheap to get two as it was to get one. So um, bought two and uh, now I have a good starting point for my manifold. So I got all my measurements and angles and lengths and everything from the 3D model. That gave me the information I needed to order some material. I obviously ordered extra uh, just in case, that way I have, you know, extra length on things and whatnot. But uh, here's what I got. So I got a box full of stuff, uh, four of these 90s and four of these uh, 135s. Like I said, I don't have the capability to do any nice bends uh, with stuff like this. So yeah, I had to spend a little bit more money and get the pre-bent stuff. Um, you know, obviously if you have the capability to mandrel bend your own, uh, you could do this a lot cheaper and actually make some really cool designs that aren't restricted by the angles you can buy. I kind of went this route just to uh, make it easier on myself, but someday maybe I'll get a mandrel bender and uh, be able to do that. So uh, the last thing I did order was this uh, merge collector to V-band. Um, so this will make it super easy for me to merge those pipes together at the end uh, with probably just a few pie cuts to get um, everything to line up to that last point. So that should make it super simple for me. Um, again, guys, thank you for watching. I'm going to actually try to get started on this thing tomorrow. So uh, that should be the next video is me actually building the thing, uh, which I'm super excited about. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.